the MIT students who created like a Bitcoin app for websites that like allowed um, allowed visitors to the website to like mine for Bitcoin or something. And uh, but like the project never really got off the ground. But apparently they're getting sued by the New Jersey state because New Jersey like thinks that they were like hackers or something and it's suing them for like all the Bitcoin addresses that were involved in that and um, uh, what they the app they developed would um, would allow websites to use their visitors computers to mine Bitcoin it's like when you when you got onto the website it would like take control of your CPUs and mine Bitcoin gotcha okay Hmm. So the the New Jersey government looks at that and they're like, "Oh, these guys are hackers. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're we're gonna we're gonna take them down." But like, they're they're students and they experimented and they created an app that never was actually used in the real world and never actually, you know, mined any Bitcoin, and they're getting sued in court yeah. over this. I, that's a that's a that's more of a affront to free speech than anything like people should be allowed to experiment and and create interesting apps as part of you know free expression uh if they start using it to hurt other people then there's a justification uh maybe for the government to come in and you know try and stop them but like um, they didn't do anything the new jersey attorney general said that this program was used on at least three websites that were uh, based in New Jersey, and really? that's where that's okay. where they got their justification to you know attack these students. Interesting. Okay, so it was used out in the wild. Allegedly. Allegedly. Okay, but st yeah, I mean, still, still, um, I I'm I'm looking at the Wired article, uh, the mining tool known as Tidbit was developed in late 2013 by Ruben and his classmates for the Node Knockout Hackathon. Only Ruben is identified on the subpoena, but his three classmates are identified on the Hackathon website as Oliver Song, Kevin King, and Carolyn Zhang. The now-defunct tool was designed to offer website visitors an alternative way to support the sites they visited by using their computers to mine bitcoins for them in exchange for having online ads removed. That's... I mean that's a pretty interesting implementation. Um, like, it, even if they tried to use it right now, I don't think it, like it just simply wouldn't work because regular computers aren't powerful enough to mine Bitcoin anyway now. So that wouldn't yeah. really work very well. You might as well just keep the ads on the website. <laughs> yeah, um, like yeah, you you can't even. It takes you like six hours just to mine one Satoshi now. So on a on a computer. Holy crap! Is that true? On a regular I'd, computer. I did. I tried it. I, I like. I didn't know anything about Bitcoin mining. I didn't know anything about you know difficulty or anything. This was like when I first started getting interested in having Bitcoin, and I was like, well, you know, I guess I can use my laptop to mine. Yeah. <laughs> and I ran it like all day, and it took me like. It was actually more like three or four hours, and I got a Satoshi. Nice. And it, it just. But it also bogged my laptop down so much that I couldn't use it for anything else. Like, it sat there, and it was this, like, uh, it was some, like, online mining service, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One Satoshi. That's, what is a Satoshi again? Is that a millionth of a Bitcoin? Or it's a hundred the smallest. Million? Um, I don't know, but it's, it's the smallest division. Okay, yeah. It's either a millionth or, a, or like, a ten millionth, um, which is you know like a, a, a thousandth of a cent <laughs> and yeah. um yeah that's a, that's a testament to how ridiculous yeah. the mining hashing power has gotten i couldn't even put that in a wallet because it wasn't enough to pay the transaction fee <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um yeah so hopefully these these MIT guys like i don't know i feel like the school should um, help defend them in court from this. Uh, yeah, like I don't know, I don't know why New Jersey is saying that this is a bad thing though. Because 
it's not like it's malicious or anything. It's, um, you know, it's just another way of, you know, making your website profitable because, you know, when you go, when you go on the website, by going onto the website, you accept terms of service, you know, just by, you know, typing the address in your, into your browser and going there. And so part of it is we can use a port coin to help us stay afloat. I mean, the only time, the only way it would become a problem is if they, like, um, were able to stay inside your computer somehow, and they continued to use it to mine bitcoins after you left. Then that would, you know, basically be theft of your, you know, electricity. Yeah, and you know, I, I would, I would hope that they would actually, uh, you know, seek people's permission to do that, or just, or just put like a gigantic button on the on the corner, being like, would you. Would you like to remove the ads on this site, and then, and, and instead, you can use your computer's CPU power to mine bitcoins for us? And it's just like a, you opt into it. Uh, that would that would make sense. And like I'm not sure if that's the kind of the kind of implementation they used, but like, I think that I think they did use that implementation in order to basically ask people uh, if they want to look at ads or mine bitcoin. Um, yeah. So you know, if people agree to that, then what's what's the problem? They're they're opting in. There's no problem with it. Yeah, and you know, like it also wasn't even you know, it, it was just like you know the, a really intelligent equivalent of a science fair project. Like you know, they didn't they didn't, weren't making any money off of it. The you know the attorney general said that three three whole websites somehow got a hold of this code, but. I mean, you know, that's they didn't back that up with any evidence as far as I could tell and I don't know. I just felt threatened by it. Yeah. The the program never got beyond the proof of concept stage, uh, before Rubin and Tidbit as an entity were hit with subpoenas by the New Jersey Division of Consumer Affairs just weeks after winning the award. So it's like <laughs> Like apparently the New Jersey Division of Consumer Affairs is like keeping an eye on the MI what the MIT students are doing. Oh, they just came out with this project. They just, you know, got an award in the in the hackathon. We have to stop them and make sure this thing never gets out into the wild and gets popular. But like hit them yeah. with a lawsuit right away. Just totally discourage them from ever thinking about doing anything like that. It's like aren't you uh, better things that the New Jersey Division of Consumer Affairs can be <laughs> looking into? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Probably not. They'd probably be better off just closing shop and going home. <laughs> go, just leave and go find something else more beneficial. Get a real to job. Society. Yeah, provide value to the world yeah, instead of get a get a real job in the private sector. Yeah, instead of putting other people down who are actually creating interesting things with their time and their skills, you know, trying to discourage them from doing interesting stuff. It's like, why don't you go and do interesting stuff with your life? <laughs>